Good evening. With us, we have the president of the ANC Women's League and also Minister for Basic Education, Umamo Inj Mutsekh. Welcome, Mama, and thank you for joining us. No, thank you very much, and thank you for having us as the ANC Women's League. It has indeed been a long week since the announcement of Tata's passing. How have you feel, been feeling? It's been a long week, but I think these many activities have been very helpful in being therapeutic, helping us to always at all times to talk about him, to be in action and to reflect. So it's been a very therapeutic week also, just in enabling us to, to, to also appreciate his legacy. For fact, it's been a very, I think, productive and helpful week. Uh, Minister, can you tell us what Dato Mandela represents for the ANC Women's League? You know, with the reflections, he just represents a holistic person. You know, when you are with him, you see him as president, you see him as president of the country. But now that we reflect on him, you are able to see, I don't know what to, uh, maybe a giant, you don't know what it's inside his brain. But you really saw, see a very rounded person, a sports person, a happy person. When he ov obviously had his own difficulties, but he always wore that smile, which made you feel that you're doing the happy pe person. I had the privilege of working under him in the union buildings, and people don't know that side of him. He can be quite strict, quite firm, and yeah, quite angry also if he just really feels that people are, are unserious about their work. So you just see a very rounded person, and that's what he is. Humanistic, magnanimous, but what I think more than anything that he taught us is to let go. It's very difficult as a person to let go of anger, to let go of pain, to let go of misery, but also to let go of hatred. And you end up finishing or ex ex you know, ex exhausting yourself by just allowing yourself to be trapped in anger, in hatred, and just looking back. Whereas if you learn to let go, then you have enough energy to be able to move on. And I think that's one of the biggest things that he, he taught us. He taught us to be magnanimous, taught us to be humble, but to be firm, determined, but also to, to rise above difficulties whilst going down to solve problems sometimes. Can you share with us what your earliest memory was of Dadu Mandela? As I said, in 1994, I was one of those uh, NC members who had been trained to work in government, so I worked in his office as a public servant. And we were in the RDP office. And every time, I mean, I think it was also just this anxiety to, to, to see things happening. And it's not to be a big program, a presidential nodal point, we had said we're going to build houses, roads, bring water and electricity. Whilst we're still in the planning stage, every week, second week, he used, used to come to the office and say, what is the progress? I mean, this is two weeks for an infrastructure plan. He comes back another two weeks, what is the progress? And the typical answer it would be, you know, things are still in the pipeline, President. So we come after two weeks, progress, you know, things are still in the pipeline. And that, the other day, he just lost it and just sat in closer, can grab the pipe, just pierce through this pipe. I want to see what is inside this pipe because I might be waiting. Maybe there's nothing in this pipe. Just open it up, let's see what is there, and then deal with it. I can't be listening to pipe stories. And we're all terrified because you just got a sense that he's lost it. And as a happy person, you don't know how he reacts when he's lo he lost it. And I always, now as a minister, when they keep on telling me about pipelines, I remember him to say, just pierce the pipe, let me see what is inside. Maybe the pipe is empty, maybe it's blocked, maybe things are dead inside the pipeline. So let's just see what is inside the pipe. And that's what I always remember. And I always use it in my office to say, mm -mm, this pipe looks too, lo too long, let's shorten it, let's see. And then we'll seal it after, let's see what is inside the pipe. Uh, how has Dada's leadership influenced you in your capacity as the president of the Women's League? It's. It's the typical of those ANC people, your, your Sisulus, the Tambo himself, you always pick up a leaf. But what I pick up from them, that generation, they were damn serious about and focused. When they said they want something, that's what they do. If you read also about Tambo, you can see that this is a man who meant business. 
who was ready to give the all for that which he thought was principled. Even with Sisula, Sisula as a businessman, he had no business to be in politics. He could have gone and have a good life. Tambo was a lawyer. He could have gone on to have a good life. Mandela was a lawyer. But it's those that rare quality. And sometimes when you feel tired of doing things and you say, what, I, what do I have to lose by doing more? There's no prison. There's no threat of a prison. There's no threat of me going to break stones in Robben Island. All I have to do is just to wake up and do it. So he, they really inspire me sometimes, even when I feel tired to say, people have suffered so much for this thing. What is waking up at four? I mean, what, what, what's waking up at four? Or what does a, a missing a night mean? I mean, it can't be too much for what these people have achieved for us. Uh, sleeping in jail, breaking stones for almost 20 years. And it's just that price, that price that they paid for this freedom keeps me going to say, I have very little to lose now. All we have to do is to just simply continue doing what they wanted us to do in a very safe environment and an enabling environment that they've created for us. So it's really just a bit to, 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 to go on and know that this freedom that we have, the price was just huge and we have to respect it. In terms of the advancement of women in South Africa, what would you say is Tata's most significant contribution? You know, Utata, we always repeat this 1991 conference of the ANC, when Terra was really romping at conference. Romping, he was leading the charge against us when we were wanting 30%. He already was leading the charge against women. And Tata all the time kept on just bring him, to calm him down, bring him to order. And finally, when we got the 30%, which led to the 50%, I always credit the 30% to Utata Sisulu and Utatu Tambo. He was the president of the ANC. Even after conference, they made sure that that 30% is implemented. When he was in government, it was under his administration when he was in government, right, when after we went to Beijing, we signed the SIDAO, we went to the Beijing conference, and the gender machinery was created during his time. And that machinery has been quite powerful because that's a machinery that gave us a framework and an environment for empowerment. So that's his biggest legacy. And that institutional machinery that he created of the gender commission, the focal points, the gender policy, and all your equity policies, all those things were crafted during his period. And they have created a very enabling environment which has, en has enabled us to really operate in a very safe, but also in a very structured environment. And then in terms of uh, promoting and sustaining his legacy, what are some of the plans that you can share with us of the Women's League? One is to teach people, just as Utani was going to say, just take a leaf. It might, it might just maybe be too much for a human being. Just take a leaf and say, this is what I'm going to pick up from Mandela. The legacy I'm going to pick up, perhaps the one of really being a peacemaker. Just make it your mission and go for it. Or am I going to be the one who's a strategist at all times, make sure that things happen, just pick up that one. And what we want to do as a women's league, as part of his legacy, is to teach through him the values of the ANC, that in the ANC we respect people in the ANC, so to really use him as a teaching guide to enable us to inculcate or to run political education. He's, I think everybody has had an, had an opportunity of hearing all the things about him. And we say to people, if they can do some of the things that he stood for, the ANS would be a better organization. Because the ANS is very key and critical for us as a country. I mean, it's only the ANC that I'm clear in my mind can take us to other levels. And anybody who can, any, any, anything that can threaten the power and the strength of the ANC threatens our own path to development. So it's very important to use this legacy, to use this personality, to teach people about the values of the ANC, strengthen the ANC, strengthen the ANC Women's League, for us to be strong enough to be able to take on the battle. So the legacy will be to strengthen the ANC and, yeah, and, and inculcate the values of Mandela in the ANC.
And lastly, um, what advice would you give to the women of South Africa in terms of how they can incorporate the values that you refer to in their daily lives, whether it be in their professional careers as uh, women in society or women who are running businesses or women in politics? To let go of pettiness and look at the bigger picture all the time and not to lose focus on the ball. You should not let things to distract you, things like anger, th things like pettiness, things like hatred. Just don't allow yourself to be distracted. At all times, focus on the bigger picture. Thank you, Mama, for joining us.